back to the Coral Reef Talk. As you can probably see, I had a lot of fun at Reefapalooza Orlando, and while I was there, I had to stop by the Continuum Aquatics and Brightwell Aquatics booth to learn more about their biological filter media they call Export. Hello, I'm Jack Kent. I'm with Brightwell Aquatics and Continuum Aquatics, and we're here in Orlando, Florida at the Reefapalooza show and we're demonstrating our new export bricks and plates. Export is a biological medium that we've had on the market now for about six years as cubes, and the cubes are small, they look like this, and they've done a really good job for biological filtration. And so we've now made that same material into our bricks and our plates. Each brick has a surface area of about 80 or 90,000 square feet. So they provide a huge surface area for bacterial growth. We rate the brick at about 1,200 gallons of seawater for filtration for a marine reef aquarium. Now if you have very large fish or a larger number of fish, you may need more filtration than that. We also have it in the form of a plate. And if you'll look down at the water flows coming out of the brick, the brick has dimples in it and those dimples create a hydraulic pressure and a flow so that even on the areas of the brick that look dry to you, if you touch them, they're cool and moist and you can see the water on your thumb. So you actually have bacteria growing in this whole area. Now the way we've employed this brick, we're expecting it to be used um, aerobically or with oxygen for the conversion of ammonia and nitrite down to nitrate. If we take that same brick and we mount it underwater with the dimples down, then it will go largely anaerobic and foster anaerobic bacterial growth, in which case it will convert nitrogen gas, I mean convert nitrates back to nitrogen gas. So you'll complete the whole ammonia cycle and basically get that nitrate, or nitrogen in that case, out of your system. Um, the bricks have some really unique features in that the materials are bound so that we don't get the release of silicates that people have had problems with in the past. We don't add any alumina uh, to the uh, water. And also, we can dope it with other materials. Every brick and plate is also doped with aragonite, which is a natural uh, material that coral is made from. And what the aragonite does in this case, because these cells are small, the bacteria that live in the cells um, are producing acid waste in that small cell and it will actually kill the bacteria over time. So with the aragonite that's in the material, what it will do is it will tend to buffer that pH and keep it up and stable so the bacteria lives much longer. So you get a lot more use out of the surface area that you have than you do with some competing materials that are on the market. Also, we can dope it with other things. This plate, if you can zoom in, you can see that there are little yellow pieces in here. That's elemental sulfur that's put in the material to act as an electron donor for denitration bacteria. So you'll grow a lot more bacteria in this brick. They'll process more nitrogen faster than you will without the sulfur. You will still need a car carbon source, which we have our reef microfuel that does a really good job for that. And then we have a, um, we have a third one, if you'll open that jar for me, please. Um, this material is our phosphate material, and you'll notice that it's brown in color because it, its surface, on the surface of this material, we grow uh, GFO, or granular ferric oxide. Now that's used a lot of time in the industry, but you don't get full use out of it. This material will do about 20 times what normal GFO will do in an aquarium. Um, so it's very, very cost effective, even though it is expensive to initially buy. One of the other great features about all the materials is it has a huge affinity for water. When I put this dry brick, which weighs, or cube, which weighs almost, weighs almost nothing, um, it's 80% air. I'm gonna put it in this puddle of water right here, and you'll notice that it's wicking the water up into the cube. So with the great affinity for moisture that the material has, it will actually stay wet for days. A cube will stay wet for approximately a day and a half, and the brick will stay wet for approximately three days. Now this is important to you because your bacteria don't die if you have a power outage. So you don't have to recycle the system. So most marine systems take anywhere from 30 days to over several months to really cycle. 
So if you have a lot of fish and corals in the system, you kill off your bacteria, you're going to crash your system. You have to take a lot of unusual methods of adding bacteria, ammonia removers to try to save your tank, transferring to another system. In this case, you just leave the brick in air just like it is. As long as it's not dried out with air blowing on it like a hair dryer or something, it's going to maintain the bacteria within it. Within a couple of days, your power's up and running again, and you're good to go. So bacteria is still alive. So that's a, that's a great feature. So it has a number of great features that other types of products just don't have. This particular brick is probably worth about this whole booth and bio balls about halfway to the ceiling. So it is a huge amount of surface area for bacterial growth. Thank you so much for checking out this video, guys. If you would like to see more videos of my Reefapalooza 2017 experience, click here and don't forget to leave me a like and comment down below. Oh, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel to be notified every time I post a new video. And I'll see you next time on the Coral Reef Talk.